hey loves and welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for joining me um as i shared with you guys before i was going to be doing a little some things a little bit differently and kind of talking about things that have been placed on my heart that um i've been called to, to share with the world um and because of the god i serve i want to be obedient and i know that a lot of people may turn away may not watch or may get a little discouraged because that's not what they came here for um but my channel talks about lifestyle and this is a part of my lifestyle um so there are people who don't believe in jesus there are people who don't believe that god exists there are people that don't believe in faith and what have you so for those people um definitely like i said before don't be selfish Share that with somebody else in the world who could benefit from it, who needs it, who can use it. And I pray that one day you will be able to come to grips with um, understanding um, the power of prayer and just transforming your life for the greater good. Um, I'm going to use this platform no matter how many people I talk to or who, how many people watch this. I'm going to continue to use this platform to inspire others, to encourage others, to uplift and motivate others. If it's through my cooking, if it's through my dancing, if it's through my vlogs, which are very few and far between. If it's through our um, Pillow Talk with TNTA or if it's through these series that I do now. Um, however God leads me to do it, I'm going to continue to be obedient and do what I've been called to do. So with that said... I'm not going to say that again when I post another one of these. That will be the first and the last time that I will go into the spiel of that. Even if you comment and say something negative, I'm going to disregard it. I'm not going to act like I'm just holier than thou home and don't get offended by it because I'm still human. But I'm just not going to let that affect my journey, my purpose, and my reason for doing what I'm doing. Um, so I'm going to do... Um, a series that will allow me to help you guys understand and know me more um, and the woman that I am and that I'm becoming or in the woman that I was. So you guys start with where I started first to know where I am now. Um, and then take a journey through the Bible of different women that um, I feel like I connect with. That also in turn will help to be able to connect you with them so you can understand who you are and who you want to become and how to go about doing that. Um, I'm sorry, I know that I have some men that follow my channel. I hope you guys will be patient with me and know that I'm not being biased just because I'm a woman. But my goal with sharing this information is to help us as women understand who we are um, as far as how God created us and who we're becoming. And in turn, with us discovering who we are and understanding our, our purpose and our divine divinity here on earth, um, it will help us help you to understand the woman that you're getting. So it's a win-win for both of us. Yes, I know I'm talking about women, but for the men that watch this, show, this channel, um, it helps you guys too to be able to understand your wife, your daughter, your mother, your sister, your aunts, your cousins, whomever is a woman in your life helps you understand them that much more to be able to be patient with them, to understand that they're going through a process and a phase in life that they sometimes don't understand. Um, but to know that, you know, there's, um, there's things about them that they're still figuring out within themselves. Um, this journey um, has been an interesting one for me. And I can say that as me and my husband, we've been together 10 years now. We've been married eight, I mean, nine next year. Um, and we, we're still learning each other. We um, There's things about me that, okay, so when we first got together, <clears throat> there's things about me that were told to him. Um, but as we have been together all this time, there's things that have been, that he's learned over time. Like the things that have affected me in life, the things that, gets under my skin the things that you know i enjoy doing he's also helped to pull things out of me that i've ran from or been afraid to do because i didn't have the confidence or didn't have someone in my corner saying hey you got this you can do this or you know give me that motivation and encouragement that i needed so there's a lot that has transpired over this time and i'm just truly grateful for him we're still together so even with me just uncovering things about me and helping him to understand me better and vice versa he didn't run away so because 
Um, he and I were praying for each other. I don't know if you guys have seen that segment of Pillow Talk with TNT where we talk about it, but uh, we were both praying, not necessarily for like, well, I was praying for the mate. He was praying for someone in the physical. So we were praying that God would hear our prayers and not knowing we were praying around the same time, that, and then God like drew us to each other. So I know that our marriage is ordained by God and that, you know, it was a purpose for everything that we go through and everything that we're a part of. So I'm just truly grateful to have him, to be able to share life with him and just to be blessed by him. Um, I'm gonna share with you um, my book, that I wrote and kind of like dig into it because it gives you a glimpse into who Shawanika, AKA Shanti, AKA Tay is and helps you to understand me as a person better. Then as I do that, I'll be able to also dig into um, real life here y'all. <laughs> I'll also be able to dig into like the women in the Bible and how I connect with them. Um, and just the understanding that God is place, placing in me as he transforms me because I have not always been a Bible thumper. Um, I've always believed in God. I've always went to church. But here over the last 10, 12 years, yeah, I want to say maybe 12. Last 10 to 12 years, I've really like developed a relationship with God. And I'm now building the confidence to... Um, talk about it more to share him and the goodness that he's placed in my life with the rest of the world like I was afraid at first like oh I'm gonna be under so much scrutiny nobody's gonna like me nobody's gonna watch my show because everybody's against God nobody believes in him but that's not completely true there's still people in the world that believe in God and believe in what he stands for and um I want to be a mouthpiece for him excuse me, I want to be um, a foot soldier for him. I want to be able to walk this earth and tell people about the goodness of God. I want to be able to walk around knowing that um, I'm here because I still have work to do. So I'm going to continue to do what I'm called to do in the way that I'm called to do it and um, be okay with it. You know, be okay with the pressure that comes with it. Be okay with everything that comes around me and just trust that God's got me. He'll get down in the trenches with me every single day he guides me he orders my steps and he's gonna continue to do so um so what i'm gonna do is kind of go through this book piece by piece so this may be part one i don't know we'll see maybe a part two three four um we'll just see we'll go through it and we'll let you know i don't want to overwhelm you guys but i do want you guys to know that you know we're all human we all go through things you're not alone in the things you're dealing with and understand the purpose behind things. Now, this may um, make some people think, oh, she out here telling all her business to the whole world, uh, when in actuality, it's me healing by sharing it and then helping someone else to heal by helping them to know that they're not alone dealing with the same things that I deal with. Like, some people can think that they're dealing with all these things by themselves, but in actuality, you're not alone. There's a lot of people that's dealing with this stuff and have, they're either dealing with it or dealt with it and they're recovering or have recovered. So I'm in recovery. I'm going to always be in recovery, recovering from past trauma, past hurt, past abuse, past, uh, past, past. You know, I'm, I'm always going to be in that position to where I'm always growing um, because as long as I'm living, I know I need to learn and grow. And I want to learn new things every day. And I want to continue to grow every day. Grow my walk with Christ. Grow my walk with my family, my husband, my children, all of that. Learn more about, you know, them and understand, like, what I need to do to be a better person. How do I grow and become more Christ-like? And um, not try to be perfect by any means, but to live my life right. Um, my book that I wrote, uh, oof. My book has been written, it'll be three years on my birthday, um, coming up next month. And I wrote this book and was scrutinized kind of for it by some people. Some people felt as if you're telling all of your business about your family, when in actuality, I was writing my story so I can begin my healing process. Um, I was dealing with so many demons that were eating at me, that I felt that I had to keep covered up because 
you know, the world wouldn't understand. My family wouldn't understand, you know, and, and, and I didn't, I don't, I didn't write it and still don't believe it's written for that. Unfortunately, some people took it the wrong way, but it's my book. It's my purpose. It's my destiny. Um, but I don't feel like the book is mean to harm anybody. And I'm not blaming anybody for anything that I've been through in life. I'm just sharing with everybody the things that I've been through that can be able to help somebody else because I've got a platform to do it on. So it's like, help somebody help themselves. Let my story be someone else's glory. Let my testimony uplift somebody else and encourage them to keep going, keep fighting, keep living, to knock out depression, to knock out anxiety, to knock, knock out fear, and to start pulling in and believing in hope and prosperity and deliverance from everything that they've dealt with in life. So that's my purpose and my journey of why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I will continue to use the mouth I'm given, the abilities I'm given to help others. Like that's like my passion. I get, you know, excited about being able to talk to people. I love talking. If y'all ain't figured it out, that's why I call Shanti Speaks. Um, but also I love to help others. So, you know, in the process of this, I just want to make sure that I can make a difference in this world. So I'm going to share with you guys my introduction, talk with you a little bit about who I am and what I've been through. So again, I don't want this to be super long and drawn out all in one piece because it's it's hard to give all of me in like one 30 minute segment, but I'm going to give it to you in parts. So you'll get a part one, part two, however many parts we need to give you until we get it all in. Um, but, um, I feel inclined to do this. Um, I wrote the book and then I did a lot of talks about the book at different places, but I feel like it's been, it's sat for a while and it needs to be shared with more people. So in order for me to do that, I use my platform to do that. Um, so I'm going to show you the title of the book. This is the book. I don't know if you can see it really good. Let's see. My, my, of course, my ring light. I'm trying not to look super dull to y'all. But um, the book is called Breaking the Silence, You're Not Alone. Um, it's just a walk through my life and how I've overcome a lot of the things that I've been faced with in life. Um, I know to a lot of you, I look super young. And it's like, girl, you ain't been through nothing. Honey child, honey child. I've been through some stuff, but I thank God, and I'll say this time and time again, that I don't look like all the stuff that I've been through. I thank God that he's kept me. I thank God that he's, um, you know, healed me. He's healing me, and he's helping me to um, continue to be the person that he's called me to be. So with that said, um, I just want to read the introduction of my book, and then I'll talk about each section of this book and because each section of it helps you to kind of get a glimpse into where I started and the things I went through and then to where where I am now and where I'm headed and I just know that God's got me on a journey he's in the process of like I said separation in preparation for transformation so I'm believing that this is a part of the journey and this is what I'm supposed to do. So because my heart keeps pushing me, my, my body keeps pushing me to do this. So I'm going to quit fighting against it and just do it. Just do it. So if anybody else has, have, have, I'm going to get to it here in a second. But if anybody else has um, been in a position where they felt like I should be doing this, I should be doing this. And then they talk themselves out of it and cower back down or, you know, scurry away from it or whatever. I'm, this is my message to you is to get out of your own way and just do it. Figure out how to go about making it happen and just do it. Um, you don't need to be perfect. I learned that. I've been learning that lately because I'm a perfectionist and that that has hindered me in more times than not. Um, but I'm a perfectionist. So I'm going to get out of my own way and just do it and keep Figuring out how to do it along the way. Make the mistakes. Let failure happen because that's how I learn and just keep going. I'm not going to quit on me because I've done that time and time in the past. And I'm going to keep pushing forward and doing what I need to do. So with that said, <laughs> um, again, breaking the silence, you're not alone. This helps you guys to understand just a little bit more about me. And if you want to get the full story, because I'm not going to read the whole book to you guys. 
I'm just going to talk about the different sections of the book. But if you want to get the whole, whole story and you are inclined to, this isn't a, a video to sell the book to you guys, but um, it will be a link in the description where you can get a copy of it from Amazon um, and have your own book to be able to read the full story of everything. Um, and even in this book, it's not the full, full story. It's just glimpse into different sections of life that a lot of people deal with um, that, you know, has helped me to kind of get to where I am now. So um, the book and its contents talks about, you know, I introduce m I introduce you guys to me. Uh, I talk about the purpose for my pain because we all have done with, dealt with pain and the things that um, in life that has caused us so much grief and heartbreak and heartache and kept us where we are. And then I talk about grief. I talk about pain itself, suffering, forgiveness, and then it ends with hope because that's what the end goal should be for pretty much anybody is to have hope that things can and will get better. So that was my purpose in um, putting the last page of the book as being the the last chapter or section of the book being the hope section. Um, because that's the goal at the end of the day is to feel like we've got hope that things can still happen in our lives, that we can still make a difference. We can still become who we've desired to become. Just because we've gotten to this age or that age doesn't mean that all hope is lost. That means that as long as we got breath in our body, then we can still do the things we want to do. Go after the dreams we have for ourselves and become those uh, passionate people for everything that we want to do and just enjoy life like, and not feel like we um, failed ourselves because we didn't do it by the time we were X age or X age or feeling like, oh, I'm 22 now and the whole world is crashing down on me because I haven't become this, this, and this. And not realizing you've got a whole lot of life, a lot of life left to live as long as God continues to keep you here. Um, everyone's still here because we all have a purpose and we still have work yet to do. So we have to kind of dig into ourselves, internalize it and figure out what purpose do we have? How do we go about achieving it and making it come to, I guess, um, fruition, manifest it and bring it, bringing it to life, so to speak. Um, so I'm going to read you the introduction and then um, for part one, I think I'll talk about the purpose for my pain and help you guys understand that we all have purpose for the pain that we go through. So my introduction um, goes like this. From a little girl who had a lot of odds stacked against her to a successful woman who is seeking to make a difference in the world today. I write this book to encourage and motivate someone to get up, make a difference in their life and change the circumstances. If you're reading this book, then I must tell you that you are in control of your destiny. I'm not writing this to blame anyone for my misfortunes or setbacks in life because I could have made different choices. I'm breaking the silence on the effects of my past and helping my family, friends, and myself heal from all the pain and hurt it has caused. We must be aware that mental illness and alcoholism are real diseases that can and will destroy families. If I reach just one person, then the purpose of this book has been fulfilled. I pray that whomever this book is for, that you are able to find peace in your life and begin to heal. My friend's message and journey to healing has helped me, so I want to pay it forward and help you. I hope reading this I hope reading my story relates to you or someone you may know that is in need of a healing breakthrough. Be blessed, Shanti Speaks. So as I talk about the purpose of this book, again, I tell you it's it's to, to heal, to help people heal. Um, again, not to blame, not to point fingers because I made choices based on my own, you know, yes, I, you know, I went through a lot of things, but I'm not blaming anybody for everything I've been through. And as the, as the reason as to why I made the choices I made, I take ownership, um, for my choices and my decisions. And I, you know, acknowledge that I could have made better choices, but I didn't want to, I wasn't in the headspace too. And because of that, I had the outcomes that I had. Um, do I regret the life I live? 
Heck no, because each part of my life that I've lived has been a teaching moment. It's been something that has helped me to become the woman that I'm becoming. Um, and it's helped me to kind of realize that life, life's, life's short, first and foremost, but um, life is not a straight path. Like everything that we do in life, there's tricks and turns. You've got to go here, 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 up, down, round, around, all of that to get to where it is that you're supposed to be. But that's just life and the way it is. Some people um, feel as though my life went straight to what I did and I didn't go through anything. But deep down inside, everybody has dealt with something. Um, no matter if you want to acknowledge it and say you did or didn't. Um, but it helps you to find peace when you do. When you do recognize, it may not be big as my pain or someone else's, or it may be bigger than my pain and someone else's, but the thing is not to compare whose pain is bigger. It's to um, acknowledge that, that there was something inside of you that took place that caused you to feel the way you feel or to be the way you are, to look at things the way you do, um, that needs to be healed, needs to be released and healed. Um, so the purpose for my pain I, I'm not going to read that section. I'm just going to talk about it. So, purpose for my pain. So, I'm the baby girl of four siblings that my mom had. All together, I've got like 12 siblings all together because my dad had um, children on his side as well. So, I didn't grow up in a home where my father was there. Um, I had a stepfather that was around for a little while, but um, that marriage was toxic as I watched it and then um we went through you know situations where mom was alone or and then what mom had you know um other marriages and things like that but it wasn't and that nothing ever felt like they were um they were father figures or parents to us but we knew that they were her husbands and um so we moved with the flow um childhood was rough we went through a lot of um, um, situations where here I am again trying to like sugarcoat it so I won't so it doesn't seem so hard to everybody else. But we went through a lot of situations where we weren't um, properly cared for and we didn't get the 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 best things. She gave us what she could do, and and I'm grateful for you know her keeping us alive. Truth be told, um, a lot of things that we went through um, weren't the greatest as far as health. Um, let's see, what's the best way to put it? Here I go again, y'all. <laughs> I'm not afraid to share my story. I just, I don't want anyone to feel like I'm bashing someone, but I do want to get it out there. Um, we went through a lot of abuse and neglect um, growing up. Um, we missed meals often, and it wasn't because food wasn't in the house. It was because, you know, um, mom chose other things to do instead of providing, instead of ensuring that we had food. Now we weren't of age to cook. We were of age that we probably could have, but we weren't allowed in her kitchen to do that. Um, so a lot of that kind of hurt growing up. And um, as I was reading my book from Sarah Jake Roberts, um, Sarah Jake's Roberts, um, um, it helped me to kind of really start like visualizing when my moment came when I had to, um, when I went through the, the, the questioning of my life and the things around me, excuse me. Um, but as back far as back as I can remember, it was 10 years old and we were living in Montgomery, Alabama. And it was interesting living because we, um, we, we, in my mind, we were poorer than they, all the other kids that were in my neighborhood. But in the area we all lived in, all of us were probably poor. Um, and they just, you know, had maybe father figures in the house that worked and things like that. But mom was trying to figure it out on her own. So I understood that, you know, I couldn't. I, as a 10 year old, I didn't understand why there was no dad in the house, but I understood that she was trying. But the parts that didn't make sense to me is why couldn't we eat or why do we, didn't we have this? So I would escape from home a lot of times, um, not run away per se, but would find um, my escape at school um, in my, I would go and try to, I would do cheer and 
Um, I wanted to play volleyball. I didn't get a chance to play at school, but I played and enjoyed the little bit I got to do. And that was my um, escape from home. That and then my writing. That was my escape while I was at home because I couldn't be gone away from home forever. Um, but when I got a chance to go to school, go to the... Um, it was the gym or the community center. Got a chance to go to the community center and things like that. That was my escape from everything that was going on at home. Um, of course, we got to eat more. We were those kids that when we got to school, we got food then versus the food being at home like it should be. But again, we never talked about what was going on at home because, you know, we should you shouldn't do that. You know, you, we're told and taught, you know, what goes on at home stays at home and you know don't don't tell all your business don't be putting your mama out on blast your daddy out on blast your siblings out on blast but that creates um long-term trauma that we all have to um heal from and i've been healing from that long-term trauma like i said as far as back as i remember it's 10 so for 20 years now I've been trying, I for 20 years, I dealt with trauma that I can remember. And now t these last past 10 years, I've been trying to recover from the trauma. And it's a process to try to undo 20 years of traumatic events in life living situations and circumstances. Um, but needless to say that, you know, the position that we're in now, I would have never thought I would be here. Like, I'm not the ideal person that would be in a happy marriage like and have adult children some of them that still talk to me um and want me to give them advice and tips i never thought i would be that person because of where i came from but i'm a i'm a living testimony that like your circumstances don't define who you are and where you um and where you're going it's just your starting point it's all about where you finish um so Growing up in that environment really um, impacted me. And I'm sorry for all the ums. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a public speaker, y'all. And I know not to um, but when it's, I guess when it's things like this, it, um, <laughs> it makes me, um, makes me uh, a little nervous to be this vulnerable in this space, but here I am. So arms are gonna come until I get okay with being vulnerable in this space um but yeah so we grew up in the south with my mom she was the primary person in the house most of the time um she didn't work very much because I don't know I don't know why she didn't work but when we moved we moved um from Alabama when I was I think 14 I was heading into high school and we moved from Alabama, and from there, we um, mom mom was working when we did that. She was escaping from my stepdad once again, and this is how I know that the things that happened to mom cause a impact on me and made me do the things I did. But I'm not blaming her. I'm saying I made the choices, but I saw patterns in the things that my mom did and the things that I did. And it scares the living daylights out of me, I'm gonna tell you now, because I don't wanna be in a position where I'm continuously living this cycle. So I continue to fight to ensure that this generational curse of ours is gonna be broken and that my girls won't have to live in this cycle, but they have seen it. So I pray that what I do now will help them to know their worth, the value, and not continue to go through the cycle. But my mom was on her, I wanna say, fourth or fifth or third or fourth move away from my stepdad and this time um she was moving away from him to give us a better life because she didn't want to be put in a situation where she could be abused again or mistreated again so mom was already going through a lot with the men she was dating and the people that were in her life that constantly kept coming back kept coming back and um she just wanted some peace 